Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of profits today, coming at you with some fresh lager, somewhat fresh, fresh by European standards, straight from America, from Evil Twin, New York City. Uh, this is a can of their Greenhouse Gun, a, a Pilsner conditioned on an American oak fooder. So just Michael told me that I should try this because he heard a lot of good things about it. So I went to pick it up at my local bottle shop, uh, Wien Specialisten, aka Best of Beers. And shout out to the guys at Best of Beers because they gave it to me at half price, which is awesome. <laughs> and just randomly, like, oh, you get it for that price. I'm like, oh, great, thank you. <laughs> uh, so shout out to them, man. You probably, I've mentioned them in the past before. It's a nice web shop, but they mainly ship in Scandinavia. So uh, Evil Twin has the Greenhouse series of lagers. And they've played around with a lot of things. And one of the things they're playing around with this one is yeast. So as you see here, it's called Gaunt for a reason. I have a Carlsberg glass. We're using a proper glassware for this one. It's not an evil twin glass, but it's proper because it's got Carlsberg yeast or tubor yeast, as they say online. So Carlsberg, you can commercially buy Carlsberg yeast, Carlsbergensis uh, lager yeast. It's both dry, there's wet versions. It's like many different sub varieties of it. Uh, I think Y yeast Bohemia lager or something is a Carlsberg strain. Uh, Fermentus S is it S23 is a Carlsberg strain. There's a lot of different ones. And um, there's a whole big, you know, big thing about Carlsberg making this yeast commercially viable and accessible to everyone is something that has, you know, a huge positive impact on the production of lager beer in, in, in Scandinavia and, and, and throughout Europe and, and the world. So the fact that like you could use this commercially and whatnot, there's a whole, like if you want to learn about this, there's a great Danish documentary series. There's also a great TV show. I can't remember the name of the documentary series, but the TV show was called Boygon, the Brewer, uh, which was really nice. You should try and find it and watch it with subtitles. But this is then made with the two board yeast and I thought it'd be fitting. I don't have a two board glass, but I have a Carlsberg glass. So I thought it would be fitting. And I've loved all the greenhouse beers. I think they do a, an amazing job with their lagers at Evil Twin. And I'm sure they've gotten better because I haven't drunk any of their lagers in a long time. And yeah, really fresh. 22nd of, of December was the canning date and that's less than two months ago. So 5% Pilsner, brewed with that Tuborg or Carlsberg yeast and it's conditioned in an American oak fooder. And uh, that's what they do with a lot of their greenhouse beers. And then it's hops with, hop, with Hasburger hops. And I'm thinking this label could be a tribute to Carlsberg because it's a greenhouse, but it could be Carlsberg Glyptothek in Copenhagen. Glypto, I don't know what that's called in uh, in English actually, but it's like a building they have. So I've never actually been there, but they have a lot of plants and going on. It's kind of like a, oh, I don't know, a greenhouse, I guess, <laughs> uh, where they have tropical plants and things like that. And and it looks like the picture could be from there. I'm not sure, but it could be. It could be from any greenhouse. Uh, but yeah, I think it's really cool that they did this. I think so, once in a while, a Gontuwa, and that's why it's called Gont, by the way, is fantastic. That's the name in Denmark. We call it Gont. Gontuwa or just green. Uh, that's the nickname. I think in the rest of the world, it's Tuborg, Tuborg Lager Beer. Um, and there's some sub varieties of it in the country. There's like the classic one and. and there's been a few spin-offs on it. Uh, no, most notably the like the lime cut and like terrible stuff. But I think a, a ice cold fresh to work isn't the worst beer in the world. And I think, you know, sometimes you actually want a lager, like a macro lager. Once in a while I crave like a PBR or or, or something like that, you know. Uh, and right now I'm craving this. I can feel my taste buds screaming for lager. So let's dive in. Look at this. So this glass has like a edging in the bottom, so it looks marvelous in the glass. You can see just the carbonation, the bubbles just streaming from the bottom of the glass, just because of that widget thing, but it just, it looks beautiful. It's got a subtle amount of haze, otherwise a very bright golden yellow color. It looks a bit darker on camera, fluffy white head. Not the rockiest and thickest, but you could do a nice slow grower head on this one. I am dying to try this. Let's check, let's check out the greenhouse coin. <laughs> oh, oh my lord. They've really gotten good at this. <laughs> They've really honed their skills on lagers. Oh, I really, really want to drink this. I really don't even want to talk about the aroma. I just want to dive in, but I got to. It's really vibrant and singy. And it, it's interesting though. It actually, it does have some similarities to tubo and it must be the yeast. 
I think something like a Weinstefani, like W3470, is a bit more bright in character. This seems a bit more soft. Like, it doesn't have, like, a snappiness to it. It could also just be it's because it's Hasbroger hops, because they are quite spicy. But it's, it's really crackery, slightly bready. I wonder if this is a, an attempt at bring, like, a, a craft, craftified gun to ball. I should have had a fucking Tuborg on the side. Oh well. Yeah. Should I go get one? Maybe I'll drink this. There's a dive bar right next to where I live. Maybe I'll run over and buy a Gon Tubo and then come back. I don't know. They don't sell Carlsberg beers, I think. I'm not sure. It smells really nice. Bready, crackery, soft, like peppery, grassy, quite deep, like spicy hop character. And then like to like to just touches of toasty, woody creamy woodiness it smells so good man i'm just oh, fuck this i won't drink it cheers oh my If lagers doesn't make you want to do that, I don't know what's going on, man. Especially when they're this well made. Oh my lord! That look at that lacing. Yeah, Ben, the team hats off. This is wonderful, wonderful. Wow, fuck, man! I just want to crush this. Why did I only buy one can? Stupid of me. Blah. Mm -hmm. This is going to be gone in no time. If I need to compare it to uh, Tuborg, I need to be more gentle with the drinking. So, wowzers, that is a phenomenal Pilsner. It's, it ticks all a lot of boxes. I think it could have a bit more bright hot flavor, but otherwise it takes so many box, box, boxes, boxes. It's so well balanced between malt character, hop character, bitterness, dryness, like sweetness, everything is just like, like, it's so well balanced. It's like a musical piece of excellence, really. Like, wow, this is so freaking great. So great. Like, if it's so close to world-class Pilsner beer. The only preference for me to be for it to be world class would be a bit more fruity hop character, and you often don't get a lot of that with Aspoka. But man, wow, it's good! I am really impressed. I want to try and use Cosberg yeast now. It really it has a really nice substantial bready flavor profile, and like it's soft. Like it's softly bready and crackery, but it's deeper than just Pilsner malt, or it's just some crazy high quality Pilsner malt, because it almost has like the robustness of like a little bit of Munich or something, or maybe just a little bit of Carapillus, but I think more so Munich because it has a robust, more robust breadiness, but it must be like minuscule amounts. The water profile and everything on this also, it also seems to be nailed because it's, it's a 5% beer and it's so fluffy and like slick, like it's so well crafted. Like, and people who drink this are just like, oh, it's just a lager. You need to drink more lager, man, <laughs> and get yourself acquainted. Like you can't compare this to macro. Like this is just miles ahead. And it's it's got a fairly high bitterness, which I love. It is uh, really nice. It's drying, it's bitter, it's snappy sits on the back, digs in, it's like herbal, like the coita spiciness I often talk about is that like herbal spice that really sits on the back of the palate. There's a little bit of a bright citrus flavor up front, but it's like really quickly gone. And there's also even some slight bright fruitiness from the yeast, like which is really interesting. It's not as, it's, it's a bit softer than like a W3470, but there is definitely some bright yeast character too. And it's also, it, yeah, I'm not sure if, if it's the yeast that also helps, help, helps, helps to carry the malt so well, or if it's just the water profile, but 
super clean. Also slightly doughy. Yeah, this is so dope. So I'm gonna be back with a two bar, if I can get one, and we're gonna try and compare. So this is literally across the street from where I live. And it's windy as fuck because we have a storm coming, or it's actually here, called Salt Lake City. Uh, no, I can't remember. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see if they have two board. Hi. I have a uh, grand two board to go. We could get one. There we go. The monk. <laughs> Let's go back and do a review. There we go. I braved the storm. And the so that's the local dive bar, Boutique Bar. You'll see these all over Denmark and they're so cozy. Uh, very loud there today because there was a football or soccer game uh, uh, locally with Ovi, so loads of people. And this is not, ah, it's okay cold. It's reasonably cold. But two more, gone to what? Fresh from an ice chest. And this was, holy shit. This was bottled five days ago. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's the thing. Like when you go to dive bars in Denmark, their beers are so fresh. You, can, If you want to drink either from big breweries or like the regional sized breweries, if you want to drink the Pilsner's fresh, go to the dive bars. When when I go to the local grocery store and I, if I want to buy a Hugabaya for after work purposes, it's usually half a year old. If I go to the local dive bar, a couple of weeks, maybe a month, this is only a few days. They must have gotten the delivery of this like yesterday or something like that. What the hell? So we got a two board <laughs> to compare. A gun with a gun. Terrible glass for this. But it was in the kitchen and ready to go, so I grabbed it. Do they even look a bit alike? Let's see. I mean, they're not too far off. I mean, this is hazy, but... But if you've never been to a bodega in Denmark, you, sh you need to go. But the thing is, I was there for like three minutes. I can smell it on me already, all the cigarette smoke and whatnot. But that's the charm of the, the places. I love going to a bodega once in a while. It's it's chill. Uh, but yeah, gone to a while. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, the the vastly different aroma. I mean, this has so much more hop character. But there is a similar like sweet yeast profile on both. <laughs> Interesting. That's not terrible. It's not the best blogger in the world. Like this is just like kicking its ass like crazy. It's harder to detect the yeast character in this because it's definitely more bitter and hoppy. But there is something in Guan Tubo that reminds me of this. Like a slightly sweeter yeast profile. Maybe it's better from the bottle. This is how the bottles look in Denmark, these industrial looking bottles. If you go outside of Denmark, they're often lime green and quite different. These are these dark olive green ones and they look really used up because of being reused. This is 4.6%. Still only water, barley malts, barley and hops. Why does it say barley twice? Hmm. Did they change things? Okay, yeah, it doesn't compare. But I thought it would be fun to go there and pick up a bottle. It's also not that cold, so maybe it is something that got fresh, but this is marvelous. So to sum up, crackery, breadiness, doughy breadiness, there's a slight 
soft robustness to it of malt, really fluffy, really soft, lots of coita, lots of spice, a little touch of fruity, like citric nuances up front. Like, yeah, it's like really like sharp black pepper or something sitting on the back and like really like herbaceous, like heavy oily herbaceous flavors almost. I think, I don't know, like in terms of the wood, maybe that plays in with the dryness and like, it's really it's super light and I'm, it's not like you can distinctly, if I've got the spline, I'm not sure I would pick out like, oh, it's been aged in fooders. But there is like a softness to it, a soft, dry, woodsy flavor to it almost. And, but that often also comes from hops, some classic noble hops. So this is fucking dope. Mm. Look at that, Benito. Oh man, I, it sucks that I only bought one bottle or one can, but this was wonderful. Rating. Man, I really fucking want to give this a, it's a, I'm, I'm debating 95 and say world class or just below, but I feel like then I, if it gets a 95, then it's as good as Riegler's hand pills, and it's not. That's definitely a better pills. So it must be just below, like a 94 or like a 95 minus. <laughs> We're not gonna do Darwin grades, you know? Otherwise, Riegler's hand pills is, is a 96 or a seven, you know, maybe even higher. And that's just such a wonderful beer that I need to revisit. But fuck me, this is one of the best pillars I've had from the States in a long time. And my favorite of all the greenhouse beers I've had, I think. Oh man, why do I not have more of this? Yeah, 94, maybe even a small 95. Wonderful, good job Evil Trend, love it. So if you guys had a chance to try Greenhouse Grunt, let me know what you thought of it. And you know what, try and get yourself a bottle of Tubor and try and compare yeast character if you can. I'm not even sure if it's correct what I'm saying, but I'm trying. <laughs> But there is something to it that seems similar somewhat, even though this is a very subpar product compared to this. But you know what? I wouldn't say no to this after a long day at work. It isn't that bad. Um, so yeah, if you guys had a chance to try the Greenhouse Gwent from Evil Twin New York City, let me know what you thought of it. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm gonna say cheers in a, in a bottle of Tubo, Gwent Tubo. And see you guys in another beer review. Mm-hmm. <laughs>